everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com and today we're talking about failed Volkswagen parts, specifically the Volkswagen Jetta door latch. Now this is a Jetta or a Golf door latch I have here in my hand, but this is actually a, uh, a problem brand wide, so everything we talk about today is not going to be specific to the Jetta, uh, it's going to be specific to basically the entire fleet of Volkswagens. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of the failed door latches, let me talk about the sponsor of the day. Today's sponsor of the day is DeutschAutoParts.com. They're the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Um, great bunch of guys, great prices, incredible service. I really like a company that if I have a problem, even for me, you know, who I, I'm a Volkswagen enthusiast, I'm a Volkswagen technician, I've been around the Volkswagen world for a really long time. I still have questions about parts, so I like the fact that I can pick up the phone, I can call over to Deutsche Auto Parts, and most of the time I actually get Paul when I call, and Paul's the owner over there, so check them out, DeutscheAutoParts.com. I will put a link in the show notes to them, as well as this door latch specifically. Um, shout out to them, guys. Thanks for sponsoring the show. I really appreciate it. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of these door latches. Now, like I mentioned, this is a problem sort of brand wide. Um, I've experienced latch failures on A3 or Mark III Golf Jetta, um, A4, Mark IV platform cars all across the board, B5, B5.5. Not so much in the B6 range, but I know they're out there. Actually, the B7 platform, the Passats, which are the B platform cars, I've replaced quite a few driver's door latches. And, uh, you know, up until the, the A5 or Mark V and, uh, and 6 platform cars. So, ultra common failure. Probably one of the most common failing parts across the brand. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of reason, reasons why it does fail. But let's talk about how it works. Alright, so these actually are a pretty simple setup as far as the mechanical portion of the function of the door latch. Um, this portion right here is the piece that actually latches closed on the door. And then you would have a cable attached here. This would be your outer open, and then this would be your inner open. This one's actually broken, so it won't open from the inside. But uh, there's a cable attached here. When you pull the inner door handle like this, it pulls this. There's a couple more pieces that I took off, and um, that'll unlatch the door from the inside. Now, if you're replacing these, one thing to keep in mind is to set the preload on the outer door pull. There's actually a little spring right here and a little hook inside of this arm that connects the outer cable to the latch. You can see when I pull it right back here, there's a, a notch right here. In order to set that preload, you have to pull this spring back and set it in the latch. And now when I pull it, it's very, very tight. And that actually sets the depth of the outer door release cable to the door handle. Once we separate the electrical portion from the mechanical portion you see right here, um, when we open up this case, we can really see how much is going on inside of, inside of this. Um, this motor right here is the motor that locks and unlocks, it raises and lowers the arm. And you can see there's a micro switch right here. You can see the three connections. And if I pull this motor out, I actually pull this whole assembly out. Um, typically the way, the place that these fail is on this circuit board right here, whether it's the connection of this micro switch right here or the connection where these two wires are right here, um, which is actually connected to another micro switch inside the mechanical latch portion here. Um, usually it'll be a failure in the circuit board or one of these two, two solders. There's actually another couple of ways that I've seen this particular part fail. One is, especially on the new Passats, this would be the B7, uh, I guess, Passat. They actually get water inside of the mechanical portion, and when it gets cold, the water freezes. And as it freezes, it binds up the guts, basically, of the mechanical lock. I've also seen a lot of failures due to improper installation where, you know, this, the tension of the, um, the outer cable wasn't set properly or the connector's broken or, you know, some other variation of that. So 
Um, but the most common is definitely electrical issues inside of this circuit board right here. So what, what kind of symptoms are we going to see if we have a failing door latch? Well, there's actually a ton of stuff that we might see. The simple one is that your doors may not lock or unlock. Uh, you may have a door that in the cluster shows that it's open when it's closed or it's closed when it's open. Uh, the cluster may not light up when, when you open the door and undo this latch right here. The, it may not be sending the signal out, which would be a failure of this switch generally. Uh, so you open the door, the cluster doesn't light up. If it's a convertible or a frameless window car like the CC, the EOS, the Beetle, you may see that when you unlock the door, the windows don't drop down. That's a really common one. I also had one, one time, it was really crazy. The, uh, the cars with automatic locks where they lock uh, over 15 miles an hour. <laughs> this one was cool. It, uh, every time you slowed down and then sped back up over 15 miles an hour, the car would lock itself. So it would lock, unlock, lock, unlock all the time. Um, I found that on a PDI and I can imagine that would have driven somebody absolutely freaking nuts. But um, I'm sure there's other ways that these have failed in some capacity, but those are really the most common ones. So how do we diagnose this? How do we figure out, you know, what's going on with our door latch or what door is having a problem? Because a lot of times it may be multiple doors or we may not see it in the cluster. The easiest one is this, to have a scan tool, Volkswagen factory scan tool or a system like VAGCOM. That'll allow you to pull all the faults and if it's an older car, you might see a fault in the convenience module. If it's a newer car, you'll see maybe a fault in the door specifically that you're looking for. So you might see something like uh, left front door, no communication or you know no basic setting or something like that. The other way to figure this out is if you are having a problem with a car locking, um, lock the doors and then go around and see what door didn't lock. Usually the alarm will go off, but that'll tell you which door is having the issue. But if you're ever not sure, pulling the faults is definitely the, uh, the most reliable way. If it's an issue with the cluster not lighting up, you can lock the doors unlock the doors and then go around and see which door you open and the cluster doesn't light up. Um, and if the windows don't drop, most of the time that's a driver's door issue if we're dealing on a, a Beetle convertible or an EOS. Uh, it's very, very rare on the CC, but it, it definitely can happen. So what about replacement? Well, replacement on these is actually not a terribly hard job. Uh, it may require a couple special tools. The, uh, the screws that hold the module or the latch to the door itself, these right here, um, are usually triple squares. So, you know, triple square is not really a special tool to me, but it's also not, you know, a 13 millimeter socket. So, um, it may be something that you have to buy extra of or a, or a new tool. Um, you know, I showed you guys, uh, you know, setting the pretension on the cable is really important. Um, the skill level is moderate. I, I think that most, uh, most people that are semi-mechanically inclined can do this repair fairly easily. I know Paul from Deutsch Auto Parts did a DIY on the Mark IV Jetta replacement, and I'll put a link to that. It's actually a really cool video because he had an audio failure, so he had to voice it over. Um, so I, I've been teasing him about making a Godzilla video, which is, uh, it's funny to me. I don't know how funny he finds it, but, uh, you know, it's nice to, it, it's fun to razz him a little bit about it. Anyway, guys, this has been the failure of the door latch for Volkswagens. Again, normally we have uh, a specific vehicle that this is for, but I'll tell you, these fail on almost every every generation and every model of Volkswagen. They don't all fail, but every one of the vehicles has had failure in, in, in this particular latch. Um, whether it's driver, passenger, front or rear, doesn't seem to matter. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments section below. Uh, I'd love to hear feedback from you guys. I really do appreciate it. Oh, one more thing. When you're getting these parts, 
or any part really, make sure you have your VIN. That'll help whoever you're dealing with. You know, hopefully it's Paul, otherwise, you know, the dealership. Um, it'll help make sure that they get you guys the right part the first time, and that's really, really important, especially if you're taking your door apart and then finding out, you know, you got the wrong latch. A lot of times you find that out the hard way when something doesn't work. So make sure you have the VIN to your vehicle. It'll save you a little bit of potential headache. Um, anyway, guys, questions, comments, post them in the comments section below. Uh, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and share this video. I really appreciate all of that. You can follow me on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all Humble Mechanic. I'll put links to all that stuff in the video notes on YouTube and on the show notes on the blog. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.